In this video, I'm gonna talk about Yakuza 3 Remastered. This is it, chat. The honeymoon is over. We've gotten to the part of the relationship where you start to witness all the imperfections in your spouse. Everything that people warned you about. Everything that you denied. Everything that you hoped would never happen to you, because you are the main character of your life's story, of course. And there you are. Facing the inevitable that happens to all human beings. He leaves all the dishes in the sink after you had dinner. She clogs the shower drain with her hair. He wears the same boxer briefs three days in a row. She pulls all the blankets over to her side in bed. He belches loud on purpose. She leaves bobby pins everywhere in the house. He is sloppy when he sweeps the vacuum cleaner. She rejects all of your restaurant proposals. He keeps forgetting to put the mayonnaise back in the fridge. She drives over the speed limit. He is hyper competitive in every game. She leaves you defenseless against your mother-in-law. There's nothing here that can be qualified as a deal breaker, but at the same time, I can understand the reaction. I can see where somebody's coming from if they happen to be one of those who decide to check out of the joint at this moment. Everybody has set the bar somewhere, and if the expectations don't line up anymore, well, that's that. After playing Yakuza 0 and both Kiwami titles, the concern is absolutely valid. I'm going from an original game and two full remakes to a remaster. And the title of Remaster has broad meanings that can range anywhere from a wholesale update for modern standards to we got this working on Windows 10 without causing an explosion. There's also an aspect of historical revision that wasn't present at the time of the original release. If you played all of the original Yakuza games in sequence, the third one was just one more in the series and nobody paid that any mind. The problem with the arrival of the Kiwami titles is that you can't really afford to half-bake the effort. You got to sweep through the entire series all over again, or else you hit exactly what happens right here, and it's that everything you took for granted gets taken away from you. The introduction to fights has become long and cumbersome. You're back to loading screens when you get into buildings. The inventory system resembles my Diablo 2 experience. The side quests are far from the level of sheer wackiness we've gotten used to. The movement resembles that of a dungeon crawler RPG. The combat involves the same button combo 90% of the time. The skill tree feels more like a grind than a pleasant side effect of partaking in the universe around you. If anything, the title of Remastered makes the experience semi-palatable to the expectations of the Year of Our Lord. At this point, there is no use waiting for a potential Kiwami 3, quite simply because Kiwami 2 came out five years ago, and then Sega went on to pursue other challenges elsewhere. What we're getting here is the best we'll ever get. I'm coming back to all the people who told me that Yakuza 3 would be a disappointment of biblical proportions, and the statement feels exaggerated and correct at the same time. I was setting myself up to play an unplayable game that I would put down after 10 minutes. Instead, I played the game for all of 47 hours, and I did so with all the enthusiasm of an American filing his taxes with paper and pencil. I took care of most of the low-hanging fruits and a fair portion of the side stories. I had no interest in the social bullshit of the hostess clubs, and I had no desire to beat an AI-controlled opponent at darts and bowling and pool. I guess if I had really gotten out of my way to complete everything the same way I did it for the previous titles, I could have milked maybe another 20 hours of play out of it. Instead, once I'd gotten done with most of the content, I took one glance at the FAQ, figured that the remainder was too much trouble to put up with, and beelined it to the final boss just to get it done. Even if we make abstraction of the remastered moniker for a moment, there's no way to deny that the game was never intended as some sort of conclusion or go out with a bang moment. The collective unconscious likes to believe that the number three is the right moment to wrap up a trilogy and weave a story where everything is put on the line. That was never the plan here. 
Even the original box art of Yakuza 3 simply describes it as the next cinematic chapter. Sega was probably already working on Yakuza 4 the moment they got number 3 out the door. By then, the franchise had become a full-on soap opera and Sega was going to milk that cow for everything it's got. Who is this game made for? Who is the target audience? It's not the newcomer, because nobody starts playing a franchise on the third installment. It's not somebody wishing to relive the old glory days because there obviously were none here to be found. By process of elimination, it has to be somebody binging the entire series and this is just one more stepping stone to be done. This goes for both the original and the remastered. The only advantage the original players had was the consistency of the experience. The remastered players have to put up with fully knowing that they're gonna wait in shit before emerging on the other side back in the sunshine land of fluid animation and quality UX. And the remastered players have no way to know when it's gonna happen. Is it gonna be at 4? At 5? Are they gonna have to wait all the way until Yakuza 6 before the fun part comes back on stage? There's no elegant solution to the problem. They all involve an unpleasant trade-off. Skip over to Yakuza 6 and you miss out on parts of the story without ever knowing if they were important or not. Keep going no matter what and it will probably feel like going to work for the next, I don't know, 80 hours? 100? Something like that? I know a lot of people who need to perform supernatural miracles just to get 30 minutes of video gaming a couple times a week. So imagine telling them to put up with that kind of bullshit. It's make, break or skip. It's a rare and bizarre example of a franchise proposing something so great out the door that it jeopardizes its long-term future. The Kiwami titles got the foot in the door and it doesn't matter if it's set an unsustainable pace. Because by the time we get to the bad part, what happens then is no longer the game's problem. The sales rep made the deal and he's already celebrating at the steakhouse. We, the consumers, get left with the proverbial baby in our hands, every decision taken going forward feels like the wrong one, and we can either pull out now and admit we've been had, or keep going and chase after a sunshine that might turn out to be a mirage tailor-made to keep us hooked on the sauce. In short, this game is the second dose that is no longer free. Big Big